Niner Seahawks tonight, I bring you the goods. Of course, the best info from the people who are around the teams the most. Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports in San Francisco and from 710 AM in Seattle, Stacey Joe Rost on the show. Uh, Bengals linebacker Logan Wilson stops by to talk Tom Brady and taking on his former teammate Josh Allen. And I've got Eric Weddle's next career move. Brian Barton's wearing his dad vest. Go Bills. Let's take a look. <laughs> tonight in the Pacific Northwest. Very exciting. The Niners heading up there to take on the Seahawks. And if you're playing the coffee drinking game of taking a swig every time I put up the playoff picture, it's time. Let's do it and tell you what the stakes are in the NFC. The Niners win tonight. They lock up the NFC West and ensure that they'll be at least the number three seed in the NFC overall. For the Seahawks, a win can vault them back into a wild card spot and keep their hopes of winning the West alive. So a loss puts their playoff hopes in serious jeopardy. They're battling it out with the Giants, the Commanders, and those feisty, can't put them down Lions for the final two spots in the NFC. And you know who's really aware of how important this game is? Geno Smith. A huge game for his Hawks and what he's done. It's a, it's a big division game. Uh, primetime games, we love them here. Uh, the fans are always, you know, since I've been here, they're always electric. And so we look forward to that. But for me, um, it's a division game, and we got to, you know, win these games, these next four games, to give ourselves a chance for the playoffs. So that means the most to me, probably more than any other game we've played this season. we got to be locked in and ready for this one. I had like a five-month break between Good Morning Football and starting this show, and I only wish I had some sort of platform because I knew this is what we would have. I expected this coming into the season, a primetime battle between Brock Purdy and Geno Smith in Week 15 that could reshape the entire NFC playoff picture. I was in Kenya and thinking, why am I not on television? Because this is the shot that I want to call. In all seriousness, though, it is such a big moment for two quarterbacks no one believed in or knew about even. And it's the chance to shine in primetime and deliver to their fan bases a win on a platter that they'll never forget, no matter what happens. And I do want to dig a little bit deeper into the matchup. So what did we do here? We reached out to a couple of folks who covered the teams closer than anyone in the locker rooms, 365 all day long. And we start with the Niners side, the traveling side in his 28th season. Congratulations, Matt, covering the San Francisco 49ers. You can see his work, uh, an absolute legend over on NBC Sports Bay, era, Bay Area. Welcome to the show. Matt Mayoko, are you kidding, 28 years? Uh, I know, and it looks like I'm 28 years old. So, you know, I started when I was very, very young. Still in diapers, okay? Yeah. Was, I, mean, I mean, I was reading your stuff for, I've been reading your stuff forever. So um, oh. you're, I'm very grateful that you're taking a moment. It's a big game, big stakes, and big Brock Purdy's out there. But he's dealing with a little bit of an oblique rib issue, I understand. It's a short week. He's listed as questionable still. Any feeling that might affect him tonight? I mean, they don't know it, because he really never threw the ball around. He didn't test it all that much. It was a very, as you mentioned, a very short week. They didn't do much. No full full speed practices or anything. Even there, he was limited in what he would do. But you know that he's going to, you know, maybe take some medicine and uh, see <laughs> if he can play in this game. And I don't think anybody will really know until he gets out there, maybe you know, a couple hours before the game and throws it around a little bit. And then once the game starts, but uh, man, he's he's done such a good job, you know, since coming in. And he, he was a long shot almost to even make the team. Wow. Everybody kind of figured it'd be Trey Lance and Nate Sudfeld as the one and two. And then he beats out Nate Sudfeld. Jimmy Garoppolo comes back. And the 49ers liked Brock Purdy so much. They're like, they can't, you know, they couldn't cut him at that point and just hope that he could be on the practice squad and and here he is and he's doing everything they could have asked him to do and much more and they have apparently three quality quarterbacks on a super bowl contending team they're down to their third guy i do take solace in the fact that this o-line with the niners which i don't think gets enough credit they've allowed just 23 sacks this year that's fifth fewest in the national football league so hopefully they are able to keep him upright for most of this game and i gotta tell you madam usually hesitant to buy into a quarterback based on a small sample size i really am but if 
I'm honest, I love what I've seen from Purdy so far. You've seen a lot of Niners quarterbacks in the mix in the shuffle over the course of 28 years. So am I getting too caught up in the hype? Yeah, I maybe pump the brakes just a little bit, but there's a reason to be excited. Uh, you know, when they for, when they drafted him, and he was obviously the last overall pick in the draft, they talked about him, and Kyle Shanahan talked about him being the cop being Nick Mullins. And so some people here were kind of underwhelmed by that comparison. But, you know, Nick was a, a guy who played a lot of football in college, uh, like Purdy. I mean, Purdy was a four-year starter at Iowa State, so he has a lot of reps. So he just knew the position, worked hard, you know, didn't have the greatest arm strength or anything like that, but just knew how to play the position. Well, since they got him, they realized that, that Purdy's a really good athlete. So he has that short area quickness that, that enables him to sidestep the rush and still mm. look downfield and make plays. But he's also got a stronger arm than they thought he did. And so with that, along with the work ethic and and just really, I mean, he has a really good touch, even when he's talking to us at the podium. You know, yeah. he, he's just it seems comfortable in everything he does. And that certainly carries over to the, the field. When he stepped in the first time against the Dolphins, there was no deer in the headlights or anything like that. He just looks like a guy who belongs. And I'm sure taking down the goat probably adds to that. I mean, confidence really is a thing at that position. It really is. That wide receiver, running back, and Nate, you name it. And for him to take down Tom Brady uh, in that stadium, I mean, before Sunday, Tom had won 12 straight games against rookie quarterbacks. And he's taking that on a short week with a bad oblique into battle tonight. And uh, the Niners also got great news on Debo, which has to give their young quarterback some confidence. It sounds like he'll be back before the end of the regular season, but he's still expected to miss the next few here. How do you think him being there, not being there is going to affect the team down the stretch? Because he's huge. Yeah, he is huge. So this is the game, you know, as you, you set up the uh, the playoff picture there. And I don't know if by me saying that people have to take a, a swig of coffee, but, um, you know, <laughs> it could it very well could be that he could be back. Debo Samuel could be back for the final game of the regular season. But the 49ers are going to have to kind of measure what they want to do here. And if that final game is not important, if they're locked in at whatever it is, the number three seed, then, I, you know, they probably just say Debo rest up we'll see you first weekend of the playoffs but the foreigners do have a lot of other people who can right. pick up the slack and now that the trade for christian mccaffrey looks even bigger because christian mccaffrey is kind of like debo samuel you know he's a you know debo's a a wide receiver who plays like a running back in a lot of ways christian mccaffrey is a running back who plays like a wide receiver and, and you know just to toss it back to to brock purdy because he has such a good surrounding unit you know good supporting cast a lot of playmakers he doesn't have to do much and these are all guys who make yards after the catch so you know the 49ers can kind of keep it simple and just yeah. say you know brock you don't have to do everything by yourself just just be basically a, a pass first point guard Keep it simple, something Shanahan I don't think likes to do very often, but he likes having those pieces that can play at different positions and mix it up, and that's why uh, I call them Shanahanigans, if you will. And I will say to end this that Brandon Ayuk, nothing to sneeze at. I know he's no Debo, maybe. He's no Christian McCaffrey, big flashy trade, but he's emerged. He's a former first-rounder, right? But he's leading the team with 755 yards and seven touchdowns this season. So uh, Ayuk should maybe be getting some love in this matchup tonight. Matt Mayoko, I appreciate you, and congrats on those 28 years. Come back, please, soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kay. I appreciate you. We said pump the brakes on Brock Purdy. I don't think I'm going to listen to him, though. So <laughs> let's switch sides here because people were telling me to pump the brakes on Geno Smith, too. And I didn't. And I'm smart because of it. So we check in on the Seahawks side of things with 710 AM Seattle Sports midday host Stacey Jo Rost. Good morning to you. Hi, morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Thank you for taking a minute. Exciting game, big stakes. It's all happening. Uh, and I want to start, if you're cool with that, with Kenneth Walker. Because yes. I've been watching him. So exciting, slow, flashy. We love talking about him on the show. And he missed last week with an ankle injury. And it's obvious that the Seahawks missed him because they lost to the Panthers and they could have used him. Um, I see he's participating in full. You're there. You're around the team. Is he the key to making a go tonight? Okay. Great question. Yes, in a way, 
Uh, he's the key to unlocking the offense, right? Like a DK Metcalf the other day in his press conference actually brought up that they need to run the ball more. And how often do you hear a number one receiver Never. Right, say like, I would love for you to take the ball out of my hands. Like, Please do please hand it off. But they know that they need to get this run game going. Um, the game high for any one individual running back wasn't Ken Walker. Who's been dealing with an injury. It was DJ Dallas. Who's their backup 37 yards uh, against the Rams. They haven't had more than a hundred in a game since November six and you can see the effect on the pass game which has been the most mm. consistent and frankly best part of this team thanks to Gino thanks to Tyler and DK so um, to answer your question Ken Walker the key to kind of opening up the offense they need to get the run game going if they don't want to have guys just sitting in lanes right waiting to make picks but the key to winning is still going to be Gino in his arm, which has just been, as you know, Kay, exceptional. Yeah, give the ball to DK, okay? DK, stop right. saying you don't want the ball. You want the ball, you don't, don't take on. a poop during the game, take a poop before the game, <laughs> and let's not have any nonsense out there on the field tonight. I will say, Kenneth Walker, we talked about him a lot on the show earlier in the season. He's such a hot start. And then if you're looking at the numbers, 79 rushing yards, his last three starts combined. So we'll see if he can start looking like himself after practicing in full. And let's not forget, this is the number one defense they're facing facing in the Niners tonight. And you mentioned Gino there, magical season. Is there a sense mm -hmm. in Seattle that this final month is sort of determining his fate or has he already done enough with this team that no one's are coming to earn the job beyond this year? I personally think he's done enough. And I think that's twofold. On the one hand, this team had a lot of faith in Geno Smith uh, before the season started. I mean, I know you were talking about believing in him. So you and Pete, right? Like you and Pete really believed uh -huh. in Geno Smith. Um, and Pete Carroll, when Geno was still a free agent because his contract had expired, um, so he was not under contract with the Seahawks, was saying, you know, we'd love to get this guy back. I mean, you're giving him all the bargaining leverage for a new deal. Pete really, really wanted him back, really believed in him. Uh, despite it being an open quarterback competition, Gino took all the first team snaps in camp. So I think that this team, particularly Pete Carroll, has had a belief in Gino. And all this is really doing is validating as opposing to giving them a mounting amount of evidence that they're using. So I would guess that Pete has made up his mind. If I had to guess, okay. right? I, we haven't heard anything, but I would guess that he's like, I want Gino here. The other contributing factor is the defense. This team is looking at the number two overall pick right now. Depending on how the Bears do, that could go to three. We'll see how the Lions do. I think it, I don't think it goes lower than three. Um, initially, at the beginning of the year, we were all thinking, what quarterback do they get, right? You move on from Russell Wilson. Yeah. We're like, well, you got to get a quarterback. Now that Gino's playing really, really well, and the defense is pretty horrific, particularly against the run, all of a sudden we're thinking, what if, what if you can get your Nick Bosa? Like, what if you with a number two or number three overall pick can get a defensive player that you don't have? I mean, the highest draft pick they have on defense right now is number 27 overall, Jordan Brooks. And that includes guys they've signed via free agency yeah. or added via trade. Um, they, they have a defense that has some good players, but not a ton of draft capital, high draft capital invested. So I think Pete Carroll's belief in Geno, coupled with the temptation of using those two first round picks on defensive players, I think in my opinion, cements Gino's job I'll say the, cra the crazy thing is, to me, that we're talking about Gino, what he might or might not have done. I mean, he has the highest completion percentage in the NFL still. You mentioned their draft pick, Jordan Brooks. He's second in the NFL in tackles with over 140, so he looks good, and you've got a couple studs in there that the defense has been struggling, and we'll get to mm -hmm. that in a second. But just the fact that I thought the question would be about Pete Carroll. Pete, Pete are you going to wrap it up? Are you done <laughs> chewing gum and like buying Wrigley out of their gum at the 7-Eleven on your way to games every week? Never. And instead, <laughs> but I think that was a real question like, oh, are we watching the swan song of mm -hmm. Pete Carroll here as a, as a head coach? He can retire. And clearly, he's been completely revitalized. And I think Gino has a lot to do with that. And it's fun to see that he's talking about his quarterback of the future. And you're talking to me on December, whatever the heck it is, 15th, right. ahead of this game about <laughs> draft picks next year. And what our guy Pete Carroll might or might not want to do is incredible. Now, the offense has been on fire. The defense, struggle city as a unit. Now, they do have some studs on there, but they're giving up the third most points per game this season. Give me a name or two or what they need to do to step up to stop Brock Purdy. Not a lot of tape on this kid. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Um, so normally I would say, oh, well, you got to look at your uh, top, you know, pass rusher, Chen and Nwosu, right? Get to Brock Purdy and kind of scare him. But I think the key in this one is going to be taking away Brock Purdy slash Kyle Shanahan's weapons, right? 
So I'm looking at the guys up front, the big guys, Al Woods and Puna Ford, uh, your nose tackle, and then another big D tackle, making sure that they're in there to help out the linebackers. And then the two linebackers, Cody Barton and Jordan Brooks. I think those four guys in the front seven, if they have good games, I feel really good about the Seahawks' chances against Purdy because while I like the Brock Purdy story, like I, th- I actually think it's really cool. Like I, I, If they weren't playing the Seahawks, I'd tune in to see how he does anyways. But um, <laughs> I think that it's important to test him, right? It's his second game yeah. ever. It's on the road. His first you know, game in, in, in Lumen where the crowd gets absolutely insane. There's going to be 49ers fans, but the Seahawks fans are insane. So put pressure on him via taking away his weapons, get that crowd noise, and then see how he does. Make him beat you. Yeah. Tariq Woolen will be fun to watch in this one because he's just a great story. I mean, who has more interceptions than Tariq Woolen in the NFL? No one. He's tied for six. Uh, and he's just I, – I talk to him. I'm sure you do, and you get to hear his press conferences. He's so – uh, raw is not the word, but like nobody's really gotten to him yet and told him like what to say yeah. and not say to the media. And so like you love a rookie and he's, you know, nobody was expecting that to happen. So it's been this magical ride and I really hope you're enjoying it for what it is. And you can hear more from Stacy Joe Rost on Seattle Sports uh, on uh, 7, 10 a.m. Is that right? Yeah. What time is that on? Uh, we're 10 a.m. Pacific to 2. 10 to 2. Well, get going because your show is on today. We'll be talking, of course, <laughs> to you more about that. Uh, and, and whoa, I mean, it's going to be a great game tonight on Amazon Prime Video. Thank you so much. And thanks thanks to Matt Mayoko. And we have uh, Logan Wilson on the program. He'll stop by. Now, he's buddies with Josh Allen, right? Because he's facing him the week after this week. He's got to deal with the goat. And then uh, the goat, a pissed goat, by the way, a really mad goat that lost to Brock Purdy last week. So we will talk to him about his matchup uh, up against his old college teammates next. Take a look. So when you're inevitably in a situation, Logan, where Josh is barreling towards you in the open field, what's going to go through your mind? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this defense is on fire. The Bengals, full of playmakers. Jesse Bates, you're going to pick off Tom Brady this week. You love to see it. Uh, not a single 300-yard passing game allowed this year. Sheesh, they're peaking at the right time. Got good momentum. And I sat down with a guy coming off a 17-tackle game. He must have been sore, huh? Logan Wilson. Logan Wilson. Let's go. (laughs) Career high in tackles. 17 is insane. I've never had 17 tackles in a game in my life. So um, when I saw the stat after the game, I was astonished myself. Logan Wilson, 14 solo tackles. A sack too. That was a that was a ha- I was a happy to see that one on Watson. Run a stunt with Logan Wilson inside. Watson never had a chance. Yeah, that was a good one. Finally get that first one of the season under the belt late in the year. You were mic'd up in this game. I hope it's not gonna be a bunch of humble Logan Wilson stuff. My butt is on fire. Teddy! Tackles me. It is what it is. Take it easy on <laughs> What is that like knowing you're getting mic'd up? I can't imagine. Um, it's a little it's, I mean, you know, you got to be a little more cautious about what you're saying, you know, knowing you're mic'd up and you kind of got to let your teammates know that, hey, I'm mic'd up. Don't be saying anything stupid to me because, you know, everyone's going to hear it. And now you've got what, like five straight wins for your team? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, five straight right now. Uh, big one this week, obviously, going to Tampa. Yeah. And Tampa brings you Tom Brady. So Greenlaw picks him off last week and then after the game comes up to him and asks him to sign his picked ball. Yeah. So what do you make of that? I mean, we we were talking about in the locker room some some of those guys and we're like, if that ever happened, it's be like we would want to get signed too. You know, that's I mean, that's one of if not the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, to have the opportunity to get a turn, turnover from him would be an honor, truthfully. Of course. So if, you, so if you pick off Tom Brady, are you taking the ball to him after the game and saying, Hey man, will you sign this? I don't know. I just don't know if I would actually do it. It's one of those things where you like talk about it and then you're actually in the situation to do it. You're like, hmm, I don't know if I would actually do it, but it would be it'd be a good time to get a turnover for me. Tannehill steps forward, popped up in the air, intercepted. Logan Wilson's got it. Do you want to talk Monday Night Football, welcoming the Bills to town? And that's a guy, Josh Allen, you've played a game or two with at Wyoming. That'll be fun for sure. I mean, I haven't... We played together, I think, for three years when we were at Wyoming. Um, so I had a lot of good times there. And, um, you know, he's still doing what he's doing in this league. And, you know, his development from when he was at Wyoming to where he's at now is is unbelievable. We knew he had the ability to, but he was just so raw coming out that, 
you know, he got in a good good position with the coaching staff there in Buffalo and they developed him and he's, I mean, he's been playing at an MVP level for, you know, the last few years. So when you're inevitably in a situation, Logan, where Josh is barreling towards you in the open field, what's going to go through your mind? One, not to get hurdled. <laughs> <laughs> he's been known to hurdle some guys. Yeah. Um, he's a freak athlete, truthfully. And then he'll also run you over. So, I mean... You got to worry about everything that he's going to do with the ball in his hands. Joe Burrow said that you're the type of player that you want on your team, but you hate playing against. So let me ask you, who on this Bengals team on offense would be the biggest headache for you to personally play against? Uh, probably Jamar. He's so crazy good. He's, I mean, he's crazy athletic. He's, um, you know, I think he, He's, get, he's like a receiver in a running back's body. You know, that's how he breaks so many tackles. And he's just a force to be reckoned with. He catches the ball so easy, too. I mean, he makes hard catches look easy when they shouldn't be. But the Rams were built to win the Super Bowl, and they have sealed the deal. Does this team ever talk about last year's Super Bowl when you're in the locker room? No. I mean, we're just, we have a fire, burning fire within us that, you know, we obviously want to get back and win it. But, um, you know, we got really good guys in the locker room. I understand that the past is the past. There's nothing we can do about it. And it's kind of like a tease to get there, make it, lose, and then see what it's like, you know, with the Rams to be able to win that on the opposing field. And um, it's it, it sucked at the same time, but also there's was, there was a lot of positives, you know, from last year. Like, we weren't even supposed to, you know, originally even – make it that far let alone be in that game and um it's just it was a unique experience and now that we have a taste of it we understand um mm -hmm. what it takes to get there what is the ingredient in a team that takes you to the super bowl the most important thing i would say the biggest thing is unselfishness as hard as it is like in the nfl to have guys that are unselfish um, you got to have guys that are just willing to do their job. When stuff bad happens, we don't point fingers at guys. Like, we, you learn from that mistake, and you don't let that mistake happen again. Who's responsible for that unselfishness? Uh, I think it starts with Zach, uh, Coach Taylor. Um, he always, you know, emphasizes that. We love playing for him, and um, he's, a, he's a player's coach for sure. What do we say, Dolph? They got to play us! Why is it better to be under underrated, which I think you are. I think you as an entire defense are. I think you as a team that made it to the Super Bowl are being overlooked. I think that last year we were the team that no one believed in. You know, we were the we were the kind of the hunters, you know, and now we're kind of the hunted team. And, um, you know, we've people have kind of, I would say, fallen asleep on us a little bit, but we don't really care. You know, it's just about us in the locker room and, um, you know, what we're doing and controlling what we can to get as many victories as we can. All right, it's holiday season. Let's do some brainstorming for gifts. It's not easy to do, but let's see what we can do together. Let's say we're at the mall. Where are we going and what are we buying for Joe Burrow? For Joe Burrow? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pry to some designer store and get him a, maybe Cartier and get him some new glasses or something. Wow. Oh, new oh. Cartier glasses. Yeah. I haven't seen him rock those. He had a sharp outfit last Sunday. He's always got sharp outfits. <laughs> Who picks them out, him or Olivia? That's a good question. I do not know. I would have to ask my wife, see what she knows. Can we give a <laughs> shout out to your wife? You guys just got married over the summer, correct? Yeah, we did. We got married July 9th and then wow. camped like two, three weeks after that. And then it's just like you hit the ground running, you're right back into the season. Morgan's the best. Yeah. Now you're on the Pro Bowl ballot. Politicians need ask for votes. Do you want to talk to your Bengals fans here? <laughs> I mean, I would. I appreciate all the votes that, that they would be willing to give me. Um, but you know, we have bigger fish to fry. That's right. You have Super Bowl fish to fry in yeah. the desert. A desert NFC fish to fry. And we're wishing yep. you all the best luck, Logan. I appreciate you. Um, I hope she can hear me, Morgan, through the wall. And good luck, uh, good luck down the stretch. You got, you know, Brady, then you got your old teammate, Josh Allen, and then hopefully a road to the Super Bowl. Yep. Thanks, Kay. Thank you. You're too humble. Logan, <laughs> you're too humble.
He is too humble. Can we get some votes for the Pro Bowl for Logan Wilson, please? Get it done here. Uh, he and his Bengals played the Bucks this Sunday, as we talked about, and they look to continue a six-game winning streak and race for the AFC North title. They've won five straight. They want one more to keep it going. And you can help Logan get to the Pro Bowl. Please tweet Logan Wilson, hashtag Pro Bowl vote. I'm rooting for you. Over. It's funny to watch him like talk about tackling guys, and he like looks off in the distance like he's imagining their body type, and I loved him saying that Jamar Chase is like a receiver in a running back's body, uh, a testament to his athleticism and his uniqueness, of course. Thank you, Logan Wilson, for hopping on the show. Okay, uh, I think we have Eric Weddle. If not, I'll bring on Hamilton, because I just need a guy with a beard. Just any guy with a beard. FanDuel Casino has a special offer for new players 21 or older. FanDuel Casino's Play It Again is a thing where you can play your favorite casino games and get up to $1,000 back if you don't win. That sounds pretty good. Uh, that means you can play Blackjack, Wheel of Fortune, Live Dealer Roulette, and more. And if you don't win, you'll get up to $1,000 back to play it again. Don't miss out on your chance to play it again with up to $1,000 back after your first day. I think I said that. Yep, download FanDuel Casino today. Time now <gasps> for the fantasy playoffs. Dun, dun, dun! Here's some sleeper options for you uh, to try and help you take home that championship. Trevor Lawrence, how about ya? Have yourself a day. He's got Dallas. He's been a quarterback one for the past five weeks. I like that. It's consistency, including a number one, by the way. Finish on Sunday against Tennessee. He's been red hot playing with lots of confidence. He keeps it going against a banged up Cowboys secondary. Uh, I like him more than Cousins. More than Geno, Slimmerine tonight, Brady or Goff. How about Gus Edwards at Cleveland? If you lost to Damian Pierce, I think Gus is a good fill-in. He's back, he's healthy. Dobbins is back, I know, and I talked about him a lot yesterday, but Edwards still had 13 carries for 66 yards last Sunday, and it's a short week, so I think Baltimore is careful with JK. They're trying to get him back to full strength for a playoff run here, so Gus should have plenty of chances. It's the Browns defense. Browns defense, third most generous to running backs this season. They're gift wrapping that thing. Uh, okay, Brandon Ayuk. Talked about him with Matt Mayoko of NBC Sports San Francisco. They've got Seattle. This is for tonight. Get him in a daily fantasy lineup over at FanDuel Sportsbook. He's got the Debo roll on his plate, right? He shined when Samuel went down last week. 57 yards and a score before the Niners pretty much ran the clock out uh, to end it. So I think we see him make some big plays again tonight. And then at tight end, Gerald Everett up against Tennessee. The Titans, I'm so sorry. They've been getting eaten alive by tight ends this year. Everett, um, he's still seeing volume. That's important. Eight targets on Sunday night, even with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both back in the mix. So let's take a look at it. Some sleepers. Hey, you're sending a text. You're saying, yo, you up? You want to hop in my lineup, baby? Trevor Lawrence, Gus Edwards, Brandon Ayuk, and Gerald Everett. There you go. Battling through some injuries. Plug those guys in and have fun. Um, we're going to take a short break here, I do believe. Correct? Let's do it. Eric Weddle, was there traffic in the carpool lane this morning? Welcome back to Up and Adams. Great to have Logan Wilson on the show. Some great feet reporters getting you set for the Seahawks and the Niners tonight uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. But Brock Purdy captured the attention of the Up and Adams show staff with what he's done over the last few weeks following Jimmy Garoppolo's injury. And he's also captured the attention and, you know, I say, affection of our very own Matt Hamilton. Let's bring him in for another edition of Hammer Time! I, just keep I don't want you to hurt your neck. <laughs> my neck hurts. You got to be careful there. I can just do one of these or do with the sprinkler. There you go. What was the what was the ragu one? The... What was it? Show me. Oh, the teapot. What did he do? Why don't you show me? I don't know if I can get it in frame here, you know. Do it! You have the little teapot, boils, and then pour it out. And, boil, oh, boil, and then pour it out. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I could, we, we'll have to we'll have to have him on to do it. I would, you know, that's what we've that's what we've been missing. You know, I was thinking, how can this show possibly get an Emmy? It gets so much respect uh, already in sports media. How could we possibly put ourselves over the edge? And and I think that's what it is. Nick Mancuso of Good Morning Football. Mike Mancuso. And NFL, Mike, that's, yeah. that's what I meant. I called him Nick for my whole career, though. It's Nick, and you know it. Nick Mancuso uh, of yeah. NFL Films fame. That's who I would need on our program. That's enough inside jokes, Hammer. <sighs> Let's go to the tape right? here. Yeah. What are you seeing on tape with Brock Purdy? Is he legit? Is it more Kyle Shanahan, like Chris Carter suggested on our show earlier this week? And why is he off to such a hot start? Well, of course, Kyle Shanahan deserves some credit for the way that he schemes things up. But Brock Purdy can play. 
And one of the things that's impressed me most has been seeing Purdy thrive against a couple of totally different defenses. Mm. Remember the Dolphins in that first game, they sent a ton of pressure. They came after him. And the Bucs, they saw, you know, they saw Purdy kind of pick that apart. So they said, we're going to play coverage. We're going to disguise things. We're going to try to confuse him, make him hold on to the ball. And, you know, that, that gives young quarterbacks a lot of problems. And Purdy still excelled. So let me show you. Let me go to the tape here and show you what Purdy did so Let's well. Go. And you'll see here the Bucs, they show a single high, high shell early, end up dropping back to two high shell, cover two up top. It's quarters at the bottom, a combo coverage here. That late movement can be really confusing for a young quarterback. Brandon Ayuk's going to run a seven stop here. It's a corner route, but he's going to settle down in the hole in this defense. And watch how quickly Purdy deciphers this. Mm -hmm. That ball's coming out as soon as Ayuk is coming out of his break on that stop. And he's just going to rifle it in there. Ayuk does a great job, too, coming back to the ball, creating some space for himself to make something happen after the catch. Big gain on this two-minute drive. And this is a couple plays later. This is where the Shanahan scheme comes in. But first, you'll see the Bucks disguising coverage again. They start too high. They're going to run, roll one safety down. The other one's going over the top. They'll play cover three. And this is a very similar look from the Niners. Juwan Jennings is going to run to the middle of the field, but it's they're making it look like that seven stop again, but All they're right, going to run see. a double move. Oof. Purdy pumps it. He gets Jamel Dean to bite. Ayuk's going to run right by him. He sells that seven stop, but he's going to run right past Dean off that pump fake. And Purdy knows, I'm going to have to take a hit to make this throw. This is where you see what your quarterback's made of. He hangs in the pocket. He's going to take an absolute shot. But he delivers this ball to Ayuk. He gets Gosh. just enough on it, even with the hit for the touchdown. And then the other element to his game, you heard Matt Mayoko talk about it this morning, his mobility. He's not exactly Josh Allen back there, but when everything's covered and taken away like it is here, he can make things happen with his legs. Mm. He takes off for the touchdown. And then you see, too, how his teammates respond to him. These guys are excited for him. He's energized this team a little bit, and, and you love to see it. I never see you get excited about a guy this early. I really don't. And you liked him before he went off against Tom Brady in the Tampa Bay. You really did. You were trying to not say it that you did because you didn't want to put me in a bad spot. But you were selling me. You literally were pitching me on Brock Purdy before. We'll see if he can do it. It's a short week. He's also banged up. But it's a nice little matchup for him tonight. He does have five total touchdowns, just one interception over the last two games. And the Niners, they're outscoring opponents 68-24. to FanDuel Sportsbook, anything interesting there? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so they have the Niners at minus three. I, they haven't put a line out on Purdy yet. I think they're waiting to see what happens with that injury. Uh, but I but I like the Niners in this game if Purdy is able to go with what he's shown. And, and the reason I wanted to be a little hesitant is because you want to see how he responds to different defensive looks. Sometimes when a guy gets blitzed a lot, it makes things more clearly defined and it makes easier reads. To see him do what he did against Tampa, you saw how they disguised those coverages and had that late movement. Yeah. For a young quarterback to be able to figure things out like that in his first career start was really impressive to me. Niners three-point favorites as of this morning over on FanDuel Sportsbook. If you're looking to have some fun, I certainly am not putting out a parlay until I have some deep cleanse. Well, we gotta. It, it's gotta happen. It's time. You, you know, had a I, week to reflect. <laughs> go into seclusion. I was in New York and I, I went to the gym. I had these two moles removed. These like I, and and they look like uh, a vampire bite. And I did it because of my parlays. And I thought anything demonic, even by association, I need to cleanse and remove off myself. So that's why well, I did. We that. still got some work to do there, but we'll we'll get there. Hey, what does FanDuel Sportsbook say? What does FanDuel Sportsbook say about whether or not Eric Weddle uh, forgot to be on our show today? You know, somebody's got to make the avocado toast. Game. There he is! Oh! I can't hear anything because Conrad loves coming in my ear. At least I know how many seconds are left till break. Let's get him in here, a Super Bowl champion with the Los Angeles Rams, a six-time Pro Bowler. Let's welcome our friend and super dad, Eric Weddle. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Um, now, my friend, is that a Rancho Bernardo High School sweatshirt you have on? Yes, ma'am. Represent my high school. You're coaching them starting in 2023, yes? Yes, ma'am. The old ball coach. Turning you, it over. Are you excited? Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm so excited. I've... I've actually been at the school for the last 
uh, five weeks now, and there's a fourth period football class that I'm able to work at and get, and get them going slowly. It's a process. And the one day I missed for the Utah-USC game, I was out and about, and I was kind of wishing I was with the boys, you know, helping them out. So it's it's uh, it's 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 nice. It's it's fun. It's a challenge, and I can't. Every day I'm I'm excited to try to help these boys. How have you not told me about this? Like, what? This is a bombshell <laughs> right here. What are you teaching in that class? Well, you know, Mondays and, th and Fridays we're in the weight room. Tuesdays I let them play basketball because you know can't can't oversaturate. You know, the next oh God, seven you're months. You're the cool gym teacher. And, <laughs> and then Wednesdays. We do like culture building, team building, get to know me, my expectations, uh, you know, uh, try to build that camaraderie of the of the head coach and, and the players and an understanding of, of hey, it's, it's about being great every every day of every second and uh, just relaying that information and getting to know them. You know, I got a lot of kids that I got to learn their names and yeah. learn what they're all about, what makes them tick so I can get the best out of them. I mean, shout out to Rancho Bernardo High School. <laughs> your, your coach is already doing work. Now, this is the class, are you giving grades? No, 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 I'm just, okay. it's a, it's a, so the old ho head coach who's, he's now assistant, he has a football class. Like if you can enroll in the class that, so that now I just, I'm able to come in there and, and take it over for him because he could take a step back now. So well, it's, it's fortunate. I, Eric, I don't want you to get, I didn't know, okay, well, we, we, we're a family, we need to talk more because I don't want you to get too involved in too many things because I have plans for you, okay? Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, we had your buddy Andrew Whitworth on the show to end the week last week, and uh, I asked him why on God's green earth you and he don't have a podcast, so let's take a look at Andrew. <laughs> oh, the other beard, Eric Weddle, need to, well, you need it. I mean, it's got to happen. I mean, it got to happen. The, the I call it uh, the mean girls because, you know, it's, it's what you do in the locker room. The veterans who just, we have the special place we sit. You can't sit at our lunch table. You can't sit on the training tables that we like to sit on. Who's the mean girl? Who's the Regina George, the leader of the mean girls? Oh, it's Weddle, for sure. I mean, you know, hey, look, yeah, Weddle loves giving people a hard time. That's his thing. You don't ever want to show Weddle a weakness. Andrew Whitworth's new podcast, Whitworth and Weddle, You Can't Sit With Us. That's it. Boom. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Big wit. Oh, geez. What you know we... what? You know, one thing about me, let me give, you know, just a little, a little context to the story. So, you know me and, and what I'm about. So, if you happen to be, if you happen to get in the facility after me, when maybe you shouldn't, uh, I'm going to call you out. So, it's, it's little things like that where I got to keep everyone on their toes because at the end of the day, it's about being great. And it's about doing whatever it takes to win and be at your best. So I hold everyone accountable, whether it's coaches, trainers, teammates, uh, everyone within the organization. And you either love me or hate me, but you will respect me. And there's a there's there's some good funny stories, definitely. Oh, I'd but. love to hear. I'd love to hear a story of who came in late to that Rams weight room that you got you got into. No, I can't. I can't. I know. No. That's between us, you can, the you guys. Don't to, you don't have to give a name. I will say this. Wit and I both did a video of ourselves doing treatment on ourselves because we were the only ones in there. And, uh, you know, it was – but but we were early birds, so it's a give and take. You know, it's – you know, you can't fault them too much because theoretically treatment didn't start at – X time and we're always there earlier, but you know, we're just trying to be great, man. Just trying to be great. I'm trying to think of the name. Um, it's Reggie <laughs> Scott, right? Isn't it Reggie? Reg, no. I mean, Reggie's all, Reggie is the consummate I love pro. Reggie. He is one of the best, if not the best. And I, I love Reg to death. So 
No, I mean I can't say a I bad know, word I'm about kidding, Reggie. Of course, <laughs> Reggie's great, and he's been with he was in that he was with that team back in St. Louis when I was running around with the clipboard forever. He's yeah. been with that Super Bowl winning team. Uh, okay, so you're not going to tell me the name because you're going to save it for the podcast. Is that's what I understand here? You yeah, and Andrew yeah. Whitworth. I, you guys think I'm joking? I'm so serious about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm selling it. I'm having meetings with podcast oh, people. Oh Listen, I got the wheels in motion. Take a look at this. Look at the marketing I'm already doing for your show. Oh my gosh, please. Oh, look like at Woody in the background. Yeah. Who's that Phil in the background? Phil, 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 Phil. I can guarantee you, Phil would never step foot within a, a thousand feet of doing a podcast. But would he him, so. wear a miniskirt with his tummy out? Maybe. No Who knows? chance. <laughs> I, you couldn't pay me the money on earth to dress like that. So. <laughs> no, but I know. Um, okay. All right. So, Philip, we got to work on. We got to we gotta find a way to lure Philip. I, I just figured what? you and Wit, you and Wit could get Philip on a podcast. You, you could. I wouldn't even try. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's keep it going here. Um, let's see. I mean, uh, yeah, hold on. Let's do this. We got, we got to talk about your, your, your Rams squad. We're actually going to the Rams, yeah. uh, not, not to SoFi to see a Chargers game this week. So I'll say hello to SoFi Stadium for you because I know you can't uh, make it in. But let's talk about the Rams-Raiders game. You said that you would play Baker Mayfield right away, and obviously that was a good call. But what specifically stood out to you from Baker's performance? I mean, hopefully it's been talked about uh, enough over the past week. But seriously – I'm that might be the most impressive thing I've seen in an NFL game of what Baker Mayfield did. And I don't think it's getting talked about enough hmm. to get to get there on a Tuesday and to be able to not just line up, run the cadence, run the offense, know what to do, where the ball is supposed to go to complete passes. Like, seriously, he didn't have any live reps with his receivers. Thursday's games, you don't do live reps. You, it's walkthroughs. So, and even if you did the 15, 20 reps that he said, that's like half speed. Like, hey, okay, on this play, this is the route I'm running. This is the depth. It's, he completed balls live uh, in an NFL game without getting any practice. Like, I don't think people know how hard that is. And let alone to run the cadence, to check different calls. I mean, he had the wristband, but. I, I think the majority of people can't tell me how many times he actually called a play from the from the wristband. Not any times I was watching that game. So just impressed uh, to be able to do the job, the energy and excitement he gave his teammates. You could tell they galvanized around them, and we needed that. We needed <laughs> that as Rams. Okay, it's been it's been a rough go this season. No one's denying that. And to have something go our way was was amazing. It was just, it was fun to watch and support. Now, he's starting again this week. Uh, you're really impressed with Baker Mayfield. Knowing what you know about Sean McVay, how impressed is he? And does it translate into a shot as the future quarterback of this team? I think it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity, not for, not just for the Rams to, to just go out and fight and try to be spoiler and ruin everybody's season the rest of the way. And, and but also see what Baker's got. I mean, he's, he was impressive that two days he was there. I mean, you cannot say he wasn't impressive, but this has been Matthew Stafford's team. Let's mm. not get this twisted. Uh, but in the unfortunate events, we don't know what's going to happen with Matthew with his health and, and everything that coincides with that. We all hope. Of course I do. You know, a uh, healthy Matthew Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks in the league to lead you. So, uh, but it does give you an option uh, moving forward if the next four weeks, uh, how he how he gravitates towards the team, to the mm -hmm. culture, uh, how he prepares, all that stuff. You get to see that firsthand. And now you have an ability to maybe re-sign him as a backup moving forward get him uh, even more in, in, indulged into the to the facility, into the organization. Mm -hmm. And it gives you an option of a top-tier talent in the case of Stafford moving on or retiring in the next few years. Like, I don't know. But uh, you definitely want to try to hold on to a guy and try to build him up because he is he's the number one pick for a reason. So we'll see. It might be perfect. It might be Matthew Stafford's not even injury-wise, just ready to move on. Ready to, <clears> I mean, what is he's made a lot of money. He's won a Super Bowl. Like I don't, we can't, we can't speak for him, but it could be perfect for him, the organization, and then to have some guy, a guy in Baker Mayfield who has experience and maybe is in a perfect situation. We've seen it happen before. It's very cool. We've got a great 100%. game tonight. 
Great game. Great Playoff game. picture. Niners, Seahawks, I want you to put on your safety goggles and dig into something, a matchup that you're playing close attention to, Bosa, I'm sure. <clears throat> yes, I am, I am paying heavy attention to Bosa, who could be the defensive player of the year uh, for his impact against those tackles on the edge, Cross and Lucas. Listen, if, if they don't have a plan every snap, you know, they've done an <laughs> admirable job this season for the Seahawks and protecting for Geno Smith. But if they don't have a plan either sliding to him or doubling or chipping every single snap, then you just you just don't want to have that happen in a game. And I and I remember going into team meetings and game plans when you're going against a guy that could wreck the game or change the game on a single snap, you have to have a plan. And you either run at him, you chip him, you slide protection to him. You have to give those guys help because they're 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 gonna fight their tails off, but the reality is is Bosa is an elite player in this league, and the, and those few guys, just like how teams scheme up against Aaron Donald, look how many times he gets doubled and tripled every game. You have to, because if they get single blocked, you're taking the chance of a sack or swimmel touchdown. And as a team, you just can't rely on that happening. Yeah. Who's the first guy that came to mind when you said back when you were playing that there was a guy that could wreck the game and you had to prepare oh for? Who's that guy? Back in the indie days, I would say Dwight Freeney. Uh, but we had Marcus, Marcus McNeil at the time, and and that was uh, we felt like it was a good matchup. But still, even though Marcus was a great talent and a great tackle, like we, he still needed help at times. Like yeah, it, you know those those upper echelon pass rushers are elite for a reason and they change the game and they're paid f for that reason so as an offensive coordinator or a head coach if you're not helping your team and preparing your team to block those guys you're doing your team a disservice so number one defense up against a magical season with geno smith and company who wins tonight 49ers uh honestly they're playing they're playing at a level that out of the nfc and this is what this is what i what i tell guys uh I'll try to make this quick. 49ers in the NFC, I think, can hold teams 20 points or less. The the, the teams in the NFC. Okay. And, and that gives the opportunity for Purdy to, to, to make enough plays and not ruin the game to win to get in the Super Bowl. I don't know if they can hold an AFC team to 20 points or less, or even 30 for that matter. So then it comes down to, can Purdy score you 30 points and go win the game? That is the big question. That's what we're going to find out. I love Frisco. Yeah. They are incredible right now. And, they're, and on they're my that, pick out of the And NFC. on that analysis, that was, we got to tweet that out. That was incredible. And we will see you next week. No grit list. We love you, Eric Weddle. That's okay. And, uh, and Great we to love see you guys. Rancho Bernardo. Woo-woo, the Broncos.